Beaumont Children's is proud to present this program as part of our continuous commitment to addressing type 1 diabetes in school settings. It is an orientation tool and is not intended to replace hands-on medical training. The following video presentation is made possible by the generous support of Beaumont Children's, the Philip and Elizabeth Filmer Memorial Charitable Trust, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, and the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. This is what type 1 diabetes looks like. It's children leading normal lives by eating on a schedule, testing their blood sugar levels consistently, adjusting their insulin as needed, and exercising regularly. It's also a parent worried about diabetes management while being away from her child. It's a teacher who needs to know how to handle a diabetic emergency. It's a principal working in a school, like most in Michigan, without a school nurse. As you can see, Type 1 diabetes affects more than the child. We all need to help, especially when it comes to managing type 1 diabetes in the school setting. That's why Beaumont Children's created this video in partnership with JDRF. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize all this. We've included an easy to follow guide that explains everything in detail. By no means does this replace hands-on training this is about becoming familiar with what you need to do. First things first, what is diabetes? A healthy pancreas makes insulin, a hormone that turns glucose in the blood into energy. Glucose, also known as sugar, comes from what we eat and drink. If your pancreas stops producing insulin, you have type 1 diabetes. This is sometimes called juvenile diabetes because it usually develops in children, adolescents, and young adults. Without insulin, glucose builds up in the blood, causing high blood sugar. Someone with type 1 diabetes must put insulin in their body through injections or an insulin pump. Now, if someone's pancreas can produce their own insulin, but it's not enough, or ineffective in turning blood sugar into energy, that person has type 2 diabetes. Type 2 can sometimes be managed with diet and exercise alone, or with oral medications, and in some cases with insulin injections. Most school-aged children with diabetes have type 1. Unfortunately, as our society becomes more overweight and sedentary, type 2 has become more common in school-aged children. Part of keeping type 1 diabetes under control is regular blood glucose checks. You'll find a lot of different glucose meters out there. These glucose meters, also called glucometers, are all simple to use. They work in similar ways. You should get specific instructions from the parents about their child's meter. Basically, you take a drop of blood, usually from the fingertip, and place it on a special test strip in a glucometer to get a blood sugar reading. Now some people use a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM. It attaches to the body like an insulin pump and requires less finger pokes and meter tests during the course of the day. Before we go into what these readings mean, you should first be familiar with what we call food doses and correction doses. Both types of doses do require some simple math, and understanding all of the terminology does take some practice. So remember, if you ever get confused, you can always refer to your guide. A food dose is how much insulin you give someone at his or her scheduled mealtime. This is part of a child's daily management routine. Just take the total grams of carbohydrates in a meal and divide that by the student's insulin to carbohydrate ratio. That ratio should be in the school management plan. Whatever number you get is your food dose of insulin. Let's say the student's blood sugar level is elevated above 150. You will need to do the following math to administer a correction dose of insulin. The correction dose of insulin corrects high blood sugars at mealtime. First, Take the child's actual blood glucose level you've obtained from the glucometer and then subtract the child's target number, which is often 150. The answer we get is a variable we'll call x. Take x and divide that by the student's correction factor. This factor is a number that should be in the school's management plan. The answer you get is the correction dose of insulin. Add that number to the food dose of insulin. The sum you get is the total mealtime insulin dose you need to inject. We know this is a lot to digest, so we put all of this information and the equations in your guide. And if you're ever in doubt, 
confirm the insulin dosage with the child's parent. Understanding how to administer insulin is something you should know because you may be asked to help students administer their insulin at mealtime on a daily basis. If you're injecting insulin in a syringe, you'll need to prepare the bottle first. Instructions are on your guide. Once it's ready, find a clean injection site on the student. Give that area of skin a gentle pinch. Touch the needle to the skin and push it through. Release the pinch and inject the insulin slowly and steadily. Wait 10 seconds, then pull the needle out. Make note of any drops of insulin leaking back. Insulin can also be injected using an insulin pen. This is what a typical pen looks like. First, you need to insert an insulin cartridge into the pen's cartridge holder. Twist it on and attach a new needle. Holding the pen upright, select two units and press the dose button until it says zero. This will remove any possible air. Keep testing the pen until insulin squirts from the needle tip. Select the dosage you need, then inject it into the child's skin. The counter will read zero when the entire dose has been administered. Count to 10 and remove the needle. With some pens, you don't have to insert a cartridge because they're pre-filled. Each pen is a little different, so parents should give you instructions on the pen their child uses. Now let's go back to those glucose readings. A normal range for a school-aged child is typically between 80 and 180. A correction dose may be required with a blood glucose more than 150. If the reading is above 150, that child has high blood sugar, which is called hyperglycemia. Besides the number, you should also look for symptoms like thirst, frequent urination, and drowsiness. The full list is in your guide. This doesn't put a child in any immediate danger, but high levels over time can lead to serious health complications. That's why you still need to treat this condition. This is why you administer a correction dose of insulin during a student's scheduled mealtime. Now, if a child's blood glucose level is higher than 300, you must first check for urine ketones. To do this, you need a keto diastick strip. Have the student urinate in a clean cup. Then, dip the strip into the cup. Let any excess urine drip off the strip. Wait 15 seconds, then compare the test area with the color chart found on the side of the keto diastics bottle. Different color results call for different courses of action. Your guide will tell you what to do. Now, let's talk about if a student's blood glucose level is 80 or lower. He or she has low blood sugar, which is called hypoglycemia. This is the most common and potentially dangerous condition for someone with type 1 diabetes. If left untreated, it may lead to severe low blood sugar, which can be life-threatening. Mild hypoglycemia means a child's blood glucose is less than 65 or less than 80 with symptoms like dizziness, shakiness, and hunger. The full list of symptoms is in your guide. To treat mild hypoglycemia, follow the rule of 15. Provide 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrates, such as a 4-ounce juice box or 4 glucose tablets. Wait 15 minutes and recheck the blood glucose. If it's still below 80, repeat the treatment. If you need to treat a third time, notify a parent immediately. If the student's next meal is more than two hours away, give him or her an additional 15 gram carbohydrate snack that includes protein. Severe hypoglycemia is when the blood glucose is so low that there is a loss of consciousness or seizure with an inability to swallow. If this happens, first call 911. Have someone find a trained school employee and don't give the student anything by mouth. Check the child's blood glucose level and give them an injection of glucagon if their glucose level is low. Notify the student's parents. Start by prepping the vial of glucagon and injecting a full syringe of liquid into the vial. Shake the vial until the powder dissolves. Withdraw as much of the liquid as needed. For a child 50 pounds or more, that would be one milligram or a full dose. For someone under 50 pounds, 0.5 milligrams or a half dose. Turn the child on his or her side. Pull the syringe and needle out from the vial. 
Inject the child in the mid-thigh muscle area. As soon as the child wakes up, feed him or her. If the child isn't awake after 15 minutes, give another dose. When the child awakens, have them sip on some juice and notify his or her doctor. Once again, refer to your guide for detailed instructions. If it's available as part of the child's care plan, Baxemi is an alternative method to administer glucagon through the nose. Just simply place the Baxemi applicator into the child's nostril and push until the green line on the applicator disappears. You will hear two clicks when the medication has been administered. This method is absorbed quickly and the child doesn't need to inhale for it to take effect. The key to managing type 1 diabetes in the school setting is being prepared. Students should have a file at their school that includes a school management plan, an emergency plan, and what is called a 504 plan. Samples of these plans are included as a PDF with your guide. What should you expect from the students themselves? That depends on their age. Parents usually take care of everything for children under 8. Children between 8 and 12 may be able to start doing their own shots. Insulin doses and blood glucose levels should still be checked by an adult. Between 13 and 18, most students are pretty independent when it comes to their management. Some, however, still require assistance or supervision. These students will need individuals at school who know what to do for a diabetic emergency. Regardless of age, students with type 1 diabetes have a right to a safe school environment. There are laws that make sure students with type 1 diabetes get the same opportunities as their peers. I'd like to thank Beaumont Children's for providing this video for our schools and their staff. Blood glucose checks, insulin doses, knowing what to do in an emergency. These are all important parts of type 1 diabetes treatment. Now, no one expects you to memorize everything you've seen today. But there is one thing you should remember. You are not alone. You have the support of many, and it starts with the child's parents. You can also use your local JDRF chapter as a resource. And don't be shy about talking with the child's pediatric endocrinology team. You see, this is what treating type 1 diabetes looks like. It's parents, teachers, doctors, nurses, everyone working together to keep our children happy and healthy.